Hi viewers, welcome back. This lecture is on basic radar principles. If you like this video, then please subscribe this channel. Radar is an electromagnetic based detection system that works by radiating electromagnetic waves and then studying the echo or the reflected back waves. The full form of radar is radio detection and ranging. The target can be stationary or movable. Ranging refers to the distance between the radar and the target. Working principle of radar. The radar system consists of a transmitter that produces an electromagnetic signal which is radiated into space by an antenna. When the signal strikes an object, it gets reflected or re-radiated in many directions. This reflected or echo signal is received by the radar antenna, which delivers it to the receiver where it is processed and displayed on the screen. The range is determined by calculating the time taken by the signal to travel from the radar to the target and back. The target's location is measured in angle from the direction of the maximum amplitude echo signal the antenna points to. Range formula range is equals to C T divided by 2 where C is speed of electromagnetic wave, which is speed of light, 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second, and T is the total time by electromagnetic wave to travel from radar head to target and return echo. Radar measurement bearing of target. Target angle judgment is another critical capability of radar systems. In order for a radar system to detect a target, the antenna must be pointed at the target during the transmission and reception of radio frequency energy. Bearing measurement is obtained by using the search light principle, where radio pulses are concentrated into very narrow beams, which are rotated at a constant speed. The plan position indicator display is synchronized with the antenna rotation. The direction of an object is the direction of the beam measured from a fixed totem, which is antenna, at the time when the echo is received. So, the ability of a radar system to accurately determine angle is a function of the horizontal beam width of the antenna. If the radar sweep is referenced to the true north, the angle of a radar return can be measured relative to the true north. The true bearing reference to true north of a radar target is the angle between the true north and a line pointed directly at the target. This angle is measured in the horizontal plane and in a clockwise direction from true north. The bearing angle to the radar target may also be measured in a clockwise direction from the center line of your aircraft and is referenced to as the relative bearing. Classification of radar, primary radar and secondary radar. Primary radar is further classified as continuous wave and pulse radar. Pulse radar are classified as moving target indicator radar and Doppler radar. Application of radar, Application of primary radar, airborne weather radar, radio altimeter, ground proximity warning system, airport surface movement indicating radar, precision approach radar, surface movement radar. Application of secondary radar, secondary surveillance radar, monopulse radar, MODES radar, automatic dependent surveillance broadcast radar, distance measuring equipment, traffic collision and avoidance system. This is radar operating frequency band from 1 gigahertz to 20 gigahertz. L-band radar operates in 1 to 2 gigahertz frequency band. These are long range search radar, maximum range up to 200 nautical mile. In route radar falls in this category. S-band radar operates in 2 to 4 gigahertz frequency band. These are medium range search radar. Examples are approach surveillance radar, airborne early warning and control system, Doppler weather radar. 
C band radar operates near 5 gigahertz range. These are ground and airborne radar used in air defense. X band radar operates near 9 gigahertz range. Airborne weather radar installed in aircraft needs small antenna size. Antenna size is inversely proportional to the frequency. So, higher the frequency, smaller the antenna size. Then, K band. K band operates near 20 gigahertz range. It is secure from intercepts, short range used for ground movement at airport during low visibility. Choice of radar depends upon various factors. Let's understand first the radar used in aviation surveillance. Route radar maximum range 200 nautical miles. Terminal radar medium range up to 60 nautical miles. Airport surface movement indicating radar are short range up to 5 nautical miles. And these are used during low visibility operations at airport. Weather penetration of route radar is good. Terminal radar ability to cancel or display weather returns at controller's command. And airport surface movement indicating radar have adequate penetration of weather condition associated with poor visibility. Bearing and range resolution. Route radar is having good bearing and range resolution to maximum range. Terminal radar, very good bearing and range. And airport surface movement indicating radar is having very high bearing and range accuracy. Newell rate. Root radar is having 8 to 10 revolutions per minute. Terminal radar is having a rapid renewal rate, 25 revolutions per minute. And airport surface movement indicating radar is having very rapid renewal rate. These are having 60 revolutions per minute. Root radar is having a very poor low cover. Terminal radar is having a very good low cover. And airport surface movement indicating radar is having absolute low cover which is used during low visibility operations. Root radar operates in L-band, which is uh, 1 to 2 gigahertz. Terminal radar operates in S-band, near 3 gigahertz. And ask me, which is airport surface movement indicating radar? It operates in K-band, which is at 30 gigahertz. Choice of frequency depends upon the requirement of radar application. The minimum antenna size is proportional to the wavelength and inversely proportional to frequency. Airborne applications often are limited in size of antenna that can be used. So a smaller antenna dictates a higher frequency and lower wavelength choice. Beam width is the ability of the radar to focus the radiated and received energy in a narrow region. It is also dependent on both antenna size and frequency choice. Larger antennas allow the beam to be more tightly focused. A higher frequency also allows the beam to be more tightly focused for a given antenna size. The range of radar system is also influenced by the choice of frequency. Higher frequency system usually are lower power due to electronic circuit limitations and they experience greater atmospheric attenuation. Most of the radar signal absorption and scattering is due to oxygen and water vapor. Water vapor has high absorption in the K band. When this was discovered, the band was divided into Ka for above and Ku for under. The frequencies where radar operations is limited due to water vapor absorption. At higher frequencies, in proportions of millimeter band, oxygen causes similar attenuation through absorption and scattering. Most airborne radar operates between the L and Ka bands, also known as the microwave region. Many short range targeting radar, such as on a tank or helicopter, operate in millimeter band. Many long range ground based radar operates at ultra high frequency or lower frequency due to the ability to use large antennas and minimal atmospheric attenuation and ambient noise. At even lower frequencies, the ionospheric can become reflective 
allowing very long range over the origin operation. Now we will understand few characteristics of electromagnetic wave. Amplitude is the maximum displacement or distance moved by a point on a vibrating body or wave measured from its equilibrium position. Wavelength is the distance between corresponding points of two consecutive waves. Frequency is defined as the number of oscillations of a wave per unit time being measured in hertz. Low frequency means long wavelength waves, whereas high frequency means short wavelength, which are densely packed and high energy. The speed of any electromagnetic wave in free space is the speed of light denoted by C, which is 3 into 10 raised to the power 8 meter per second or 162,000 nautical miles per second. For radio waves, wavelength is represented by lambda is equals to velocity, which is speed of light C multiplied by time for one cycle denoted by t. So lambda is equals to c multiplied by t and t is 1 by f which is frequency. Let us understand radar range mile. Electromagnetic energy travels at the speed of light which is 162,000 nautical mile per second. So electromagnetic energy takes about 6 decimal 18 microseconds to travel 1 nautical mile. Since the radar echo must travel to the target and back to the radar receiver, so we will multiply 6.18 by 2. The resulting 12 decimal 36 microseconds is known as a radar range mile. To understand basic principle of radar, let's first understand the block diagram of basic radar system. Radar mainly consist of a transmitter and a receiver. It uses the same antenna with the help of a microwave switch known as duplexer for both transmitting and receiving the signals. Target reflects these received signal. The signal which is reflected back towards the antenna gets received by the receiver. There are two forms in which radar energy can be transmitted, pulsed or continuous wave. Originally, it used pulses for its operation, but subsequently, continuous wave techniques were also developed for other functions such as radio altimeter because continuous wave radars have no minimum range limitation. Pulse radar system requires higher transmitting powers, thus circuits are complex whereas continuous radar system uses low power and simple, compact and inexpensive circuits. Pulse radar cannot operate at zero range, but maximum range is higher. Continuous wave radar uses separate antenna for transmitter and receiver. Thus, there is no minimum range limitation. Therefore, it is used in airborne radio altimeter system. Pulse radar performance is affected by the stationary targets. Continuous wave radar emits electromagnetic energy at a constant rate. The receiver in continuous wave system constantly receives reflected energy. Continuous wave radar cannot measure distance because there is no basis for the time delay between transmission and reception. Continuous wave radar is effective in detecting motion, allowing the user to track moving objects and ignore stationary ones. Pulse Doppler radar works off the principle of frequency shift known as Doppler effect. This effect is observed change in frequency of a wave for an observer moving relative to the source. Doppler effect is used to accurately determine the velocity of a target. When the target is moving towards the radar, each successive wave crest is returned from a position closer to the radar than the previous wave. Therefore, each wave takes slightly less time to reach the radar receiver than the previous wave. 
that time between the arrivals of successive wave crest at the radar is reduced, causing an increase in the frequency. Conversely, if the target is moving away from the radar, each wave is returned from a position further from the receiver than the previous wave. So the arrival time between successive waves is increased, thereby reducing the frequency. The basic principle of pulse radar requires the transmitter to send out burst of energy with a rest period or waiting periods between bursts while the energy travels out to the target. Radar marks the time of transmission when it transmits pulse. During this period in which the transmitter is at rest, the radar receiver is listening for echo signal which would indicate a reflecting source. System receives echo from contact which is used to determine bearing information and system computes distance to target based on the time between the transmission of energy pulse and reception of the echo return. Thus, the range and resolution of the radar depends on the pulse repetition frequency. Pulse width is the time required to transmit one pulse of radar energy, that is the duration of the pulse. This represents the time the radar is transmitting. Varying the pulse width allows optimization of the radar range resolution and enhances minimum range performance. Pulse length is the distance from leading edge to the trailing edge of the radar pulse as it travels in space. So pulse length mathematically is given by speed of radar energy multiplied by time which is C multiplied by pulse width. Minimum range and its relationship to the pulse width. The minimum, we, uh, we must understand this. To detect a radar target, a pulse must travel from the transmitter to the target and returns to the antenna. Since the antenna is shared by both the transmitter and receiver, a target return will not be seen if a pulse is still being sent out because the receiver is at rest. Pulse length determines this minimum range as well as the range between separate targets at which each individual targets can be detected. This is known as range resolution. So the minimum range of radar corresponds to the minimum distance the receiver can see the target. In order to detect a target, at the closest distance in front of the aircraft, the length of the pulse must be such that the transmitter is turned off just prior to the return of the echo to the antenna. This range is a function of pulse length because the receiver is not turned on until the pulse has been transmitted. The minimum range is equivalent to the distance at which one half of the pulse has been returned from the target while the first half of the pulse is still approaching the target. The end of the pulse represents the time the transmitter is turned off and the receiver is turned on. This is the first opportunity for the receiver to see the leading edge of the returned pulse and is therefore the minimum range of the radar. So minimum range of radar is R minimum is equals to half of pulse length. Therefore, the radar can only detect objects in range that are at least one half of the pulse length away. Pulse length is the distance from leading edge to the trailing edge of the radar pulse as it travels in space or time interval between two transmitted pulses. Pulse repetition frequency denoted as PRF. This is also known as pulse recurrence frequency. The number of pulses which are transmitted in one second. The reciprocal of pulse repetition time is called pulse repetition frequency. Range of a target is time taken by electromagnetic wave to return and speed by which it travels. Assume total time is T. So target is half time away from antenna. So range formula will become speed times 
time divided by two. So pulse repetition frequency equals to speed of light divided by two times of range. Now we will calculate the theoretical maximum range. Once we have find out the minimum range, now we will see the maximum range and its relationship with the pulse repetition frequency. We know that R, which is range, is equals to C times T divided by two. So in place of T, we can write one by PRF. So maximum theoretical range is determined by pulse repetition frequency, which are the number of pulses transmitted in one second. Each pulse must be allowed to travel to the most distant object planned before the next pulse is transmitted. To do otherwise, make it impossible to relate a particular echo to a particular pulse. The maximum range is therefore related to the pulse repetition frequency such that the greater the range required, the lower the pulse repetition frequency used. A resolution, it is the smallest volume of airspace in which a radar cannot determine the presence of more than one target. The resolution of a radar is measure of how well the radar can resolve the targets in range, azimuth, and altitude. Let first discuss range resolution. If two targets are close together, then one half of this physical distance, the radar cannot resolve the targets in range when only one target will be displayed. Suppose if pulse length is increased, such that the returns from both aircraft will merge and receiver will treat these two targets as a single target. Now, in second case, if pulse length is reduced, then leading or trailing edges after hitting first target will return to receiver first. Thereafter, return of second aircraft will be received. Thus, it will treat them as a separate targets. The minimum range is equivalent to the distance at which one half of the pulse has been written from the target while the second half of the pulse is still approaching the target. Now let's understand azimuth elevation resolution. Radar beam. Radar beam width play a vital role in their angular accuracy characteristics because as long as targets stay within the radar beam, there will be a reflection. The problem is if several targets fly close enough, then their angular separation is smaller than the radar beam width, all the return echo will be blended into one return. And radar will only display a single target on screen. The longer the pulse, the worse the resolution would be. Range resolution is proportional to pulse width and inversely proportional to band, band width. Shorter pulse will improve range resolution, but will also reduce the power of the transmitted radar wave. Thus, it will reduce the radar detection range. Therefore, the elevation azimuth resolution capability is usually expressed in nautical miles and corresponds to the minimum angular separation required between the two targets for separate display. So resolution is equal to beam width multiplied by range. Theoretical maximum range of a radar depends upon power transmitted, gain of the antenna, effective area of antenna, radar cross section of the target, and minimum detectable signal. So R max is given by power transmitted multiplied by antenna gain, multiply by effective area of the antenna, multiply by radar cross section of the target, divided by minimum detectable signal, raised to the complete raise to the power one by four. So now we will discuss the factors which are affecting maximum range. So first is transmitting power. From this equation, we conclude that if we increase the transmitted power by 16 times, the range of transmitter will double. Gain of the transmitting antenna. So from this equation, we conclude that if we increase the gain by 16 times, the range of transmitter will double. Cross-section area. So 
From this equation, we conclude that if we increase the radar cross section area by 16 times and keeping other things constant, the range of the transmitter will increase by two times. Again, power of minimum detectable signal, which is S minimum. So from again, from this equation, we conclude that if we increase the minimum detectable signal power by 16 times, the range of transmitter will become half. Now we will discuss few factors which are affecting radar performance. First is electromagnetic origin. As we know that electromagnetic energy has the same property as light, it travels in a straight line and does not normally bend or conform to the curvature of the earth. Therefore, the height of both the antenna and the target are factors that affect detection range. The distance to the origin for a radar system measured in nautical mile is referred to as radar origin. The radar origin is a function of radar antenna height. A target that is beyond the radar origin cannot be detected unless it is high enough to be above the origin or unless certain atmospheric condition exist. Mathematically, radar origin in nautical mile is given as 1.2 nautical mile multiplied by a root of antenna height in feet plus square root of target height in feet. Atmospheric factors. Particles suspended in the atmosphere can affect electromagnetic transmissions. Water droplets and dust particles absorb, scatter or reflect energy causing less energy to strike the target. This in turn reduces the return signal making the eco signal weak. This results in an overall reduction of usable range. Factors that affect the usable range include Diffusion, scintillation, inversion, attenuation. Diffusion occurs when focused electromagnetic energy losses coherency and scatters. This is caused by particles in the atmosphere, including moisture, such as clouds. Diffusion directly affects the usable range of radar system. Scintillation refers to the rapid fluctuation and fading of an electromagnetic signal intensity, which is caused by changes in the electron density within the ionosphere. These fluctuations are typically caused by solar winds and magnetic storms. The effect of scintillations are most prevalent near the equator and may adversely affect global positioning system navigation and targeting. Atmospheric inversion typically occur with an increase in altitude when conditions are such that a sharp temperature increase is coupled with a sharp fall in dew point, indicating a fall in humidity. Under these conditions, electromagnetic energy can be bent back towards the Earth. It can then reflect back from the Earth and once again be refracted and return earthward once more. This process of refraction and reflection is known as ducting and can occur multiple times with very little attenuation. The cumulative effect of this long process can result in a greatly enhanced reception distances that far exceed the radar origin. Electromagnetic energy traveling through the atmosphere also suffers from the effects of atmospheric attenuation caused primarily by absorption of the energy by gases. This effectively reduces the overall energy and therefore reduces usable range. Attenuation is reasonably predicted at lower frequencies below 10 gigahertz, but increases notably at higher frequencies. Additionally, precipitation has a significant effect on attenuation. Attenuation is four times higher in medium range than drizzle. Physical factors affecting radar performance. Radar target resolution is a measure of the ability of a radar system 
to distinguish between two or more targets in close proximity either by range or azimuth the radar cross section is a measure of how detectable an object is by radar radar cross section does not imply a simple relationship to the physical size of the object however the larger targets generally have larger radar cross sections the radar cross section of a tar target can be reduced by minimizing surface angles and by using radar absorbent materials it is determined by the following factors geometric cross section the cross sectional area as viewed by the radar second is reflectivity the amount of radar energy that is re-radiated by the target this is based on the size shape and composition of the target as well as the aspect angle of radar energy hitting the target and radar power output third is directivity the amount of radar power that returns from the target Thank <laughs> you.